Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray. And this is... Hi, Nicole. And this is... Jessie. <laughs> and we are so excited to be here with you today. So as you guys might have known, we did um, a bundle call together for the Tatas where we put together some items and created a beautiful, unique project where we can raise money and awareness for breast cancer. Um, we did a live tutorial where we painted this project, but unfortunately due to some internet and technical issues, um, I show you. It just um, cut out a little bit, and we really are passionate about this, and we really care about the experience that you guys have. So we wanted to make sure that you have all the information and education to feel successful in this project. So we are refilming it. This is us doing. Wow. It. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and I'm just so grateful that as a company, that um, there were so many people involved in putting this bundle together and making it go. I mean, we've assembled it in the warehouse together. Like it was a team effort and I really love it when we can pair art um, behind values and behind causes because it really does make a difference. Um, we had a lot of people involved in this and Nicole is going to talk about it. <laughs> well, we just wanted to say that we, not only from the company side, we had people involved, but we also involved you as a community. And we haven't done something like this in a while. And so it was really fun to be able to see how you all responded. We were amazed at how many people submitted because we had people submit people that they wanted to honor, whether it was a family member, a friend, or someone that, or themselves. Um, so we have a website that will have a link that you can see so you can check all of that out of who we're honoring. And then the other thing was that, oh yeah, we, we had over 300 people submit. So we just wanted to take a moment to recognize that, check that website out, and you'll see, and I, I believe the supplies that we're using will be on there because we don't have the bundle anymore, but you can follow and paint along with us because you can paint. So we're each going to teach you a part of this. And so we're coming together not only as a community, but as artists as well. Yay. Okay. Oh, so we'll start I'll start off. You start off. Okay. Let's do it. I'm going to hand that to you. Okay. So for the lettering portion of it, you'll see, I'm trying to think where for right now we can yeah. put this. So if you look, we have three different parts of this and we're going to start with the lettering. Now we haven't done lettering for a while, so you may be a little intimidated, but I know you can do this and I want you to be here with us and try. So I got each of you just a piece of scratch paper just to test out if you want. But again, we're gonna use, or I didn't say this yet, we're gonna use a pencil. Pencil's your friend. So what I want you to think of is a word. So you can pick, if you wanna go for a full phrase, go for it. We're just gonna pick one word so it's easy and simple. So we chose to do courage, but you can do strong or strength or hope. There may be, or the person's name that you maybe want to make oh, this for. Oh, that would be pretty, mm -hmm. their name. I love that. So there's different things that you can do, but we're all going to do the same. I'll show you the few steps to help you. So first is I want you to write your word. Actually, let's just start with how we all write the word. But what I want you to do is spread it out a little bit more than normal. So yeah, if you wrote it once, just spread it out a little bit more than normal. So this is just your regular handwriting. Now, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna change this up from the live a little bit. I wanna show you, what if you draw yourself some guidelines, but I want you to do it, if you're more comfortable with cursive, go for it. If you're more comfortable with your block lettering, what I want you to do is I want you to make your ovals and your shapes more angled. So instead of a straight up and down circle for O, you're gonna draw it more angled. So you're using these lines as a guide. So do you see how my straight lines here are following that? Yes. Yes. So this is to show you, this is an easy way to make it feel a little bit more whimsical and elegant if that is the vibe you're going for. Now, I want you to try the same thing and write it whichever way you technically or you typically write it in cursive because I know cursive can be intimidating. So if you do it straight up and down, I want you to just write it quickly. Don't think about it and write it. Now, there are two techniques that we can try. One is let's try the same thing and draw yourself some guidelines. And you can see, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go slower to show you. So I'm gonna just curve my same thing just like we're doing, but I'm just adding some connecting points. So cursive is basically a tail at the end of each letter. So instead of stopping here, I'm gonna go R is a little bit different than a typical regular R, but what we're doing is we're using those guidelines to help us angle our letters. 
So then from there, and again, if you need to pause, the great thing is this is a tutorial. So you can pause and do it on your own. But what I want you to do is try and spread out your letters. So I'm gonna draw my lines a little bit lighter. But what I want you to do is draw one letter and then this tail at the end, what if you make it a lot longer? Let's exaggerate it just to see how you feel about it, but make the end of the tail longer. And then do your next letter and make the tail longer. So each letter, sometimes it connects low or it connects high. Don't stress too much about it. I'm just trying to show you these are simple ways to kind of make your lettering a little bit different. So again, just extending the tail and then like, oh, I completely spelled that wrong. And that <laughs> will happen. Good thing it's his pencil and breath. Gorge. <laughs> you all know what it means. So do you see how that helps just those little steps that you can take. So when you are ready, I want you to pick anywhere in your space. So you can see a few different examples here. We just picked a space. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna paint, Sarah's gonna teach us how to paint around it. So you can do it in the center or anywhere, but try those different steps. And again, this is pencil. So if you want, pick a space. If you want to draw your same guidelines, if that helped you, this is a good warm-up. I'm feeling confident now. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Oh, can I show them yours? Okay. I like, so Jessie added some other fun things that you can do. She added a swirl at the end. Oh, you did it right here too? Yeah, I was and trying it out. The loop. So these are, again, those are little small things that can add a little pizzazz to it. Pizzazz. Pizzazz. <laughs> and then the fun thing is, it's, er it's eraser. You can erase it after the pencil line, so don't worry about it. Yeah, so maybe you add some loops. There we go. You did that. So we did it in pencil, but we have a few cool pens that came in the bundle, and these actually are paint pens. So if you've never used a paint pen before, we've used ours so you can see the tip is gold, but what you're gonna do is, it's a similar if you've used Posca pens, is you're gonna shake it for about 10 to 15 seconds. With a lid on. Yes, <laughs> I forget to say that, yes. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna press and hold. I don't know if there's a good spot for me to do this. So you'll see that when I press, it goes into, the tip goes into the pen. So you're gonna hold it and yours will start to show gold. So this one is ready. And then we have a jelly roll. This is already primed and ready to go. But you can pick which tool you wanna use and guess what, you just get to Trace. So this is a beautiful color. I think it comes in gold, or uh, rose gold as well. But the nice thing is, and I'm gonna do this this way, is that you just get to trace. Oh, that's strong mm -hmm. smelling. <laughs> um, okay, so while the girls are doing that, I'm gonna share my story. So each of us made these aprons, actually, that you see us wearing. And so we picked someone that was submitted to give this to because we wanted to honor um, each someone individually. So I picked Dana and it's so fun. Dana has been a part of our community and an awesome supporter. And we wanted to share her story. So she was diagnosed with breast cancer when she was 45. And in August of that same year, actually, she her birth mother had passed away from pancreatic cancer. Um, her story was that she was adopted, but as a baby, to a wonderful mom um, 17 years before. She, oh, 17 years before she, she stepped in an eternity. A few weeks later, she received a message through Facebook from a man claiming to be her birth father. And he was not the man listed originally on his birth certificate. After talking with him, we decided she, they decided to do a DNA test, and it turns out he was telling the truth. So in November, she met her biological father, and when they were face-to-face, -face, she was taking a shower, and she was pushing the water off of her chest and felt a lump. Two weeks later, she got the diagnosis. This is where I get a little chills. She said, God's hand was on me the entire time, even preparing me for the diagnosis and the decisions that he made. He connected me with my biological family so that for the first time in my life, I could finally give a family medical history when before she had no clue. Um, she struggled with deciding on treatment options, but God gave her the clear direction on her treatments even and even surprising her physicians. 
No one wants to hear the words you have cancer, but she has been blessed in the people she's met along the way and the support of her wonderful husband and getting to know her biological extended family. She says, cancer sucks. However, blessings can be found when you hear those words. I'm coming up on nine years of no evidence of, di of disease. Thank you, Lord. So Dana, thank you for sharing that with us and we will be getting this to you. So, okay, now, Ooh, Sarah did a little bit of thick and thin lines that you can play with that if you would like to do that. You can also add some, if you want to add some highlights or some shadows with the jelly roll, you can play with that. But this is your painting, as we always say, to make your own. So I'm going to hand it off to Sarah. Okay, you guys ready to watercolor? Let's do it. All right, so I have three watercolors here um, to pull from. Um, the pink is um, Opera Pink from Daniel Smith, which is a super vibrant pink, super colorful. I love it. We also have Space Blue, and we also have Emerald Green to make our leaves. Um, so I'm going to mostly focus on um, two different floral shapes. And whenever you start a floral composition on a paper, I always like to put the largest elements first and then the medium elements and then the small elements. So the larger elements are almost a way to anchor your painting and create the structure with which you can work around. The wonderful thing about creating like a loose floral pattern is that it's super um, easy to adjust it to different sizes. So if you wanna do this square mm. piece of paper, you're good to go. If you wanna do a little postcard, you're good to go. Any size oh, you yeah. want, you can take these same elements and put them together to um, for whatever project you wanna paint, which I really love about that. We have our round 10 brush here, which is actually a really wonderful brush for doing florals because it has a nice thick belly, but a really nice tip too, so we can still get some nice detail lines. And um, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you how to do two different flowers and then we'll um, start adding more and more elements, okay? So I got my paper towel, I got my brush, I got my paint. I'm gonna take a little bit of this pink and pull it off to the side so it's a lighter value. And the first flower I'm gonna do is super, super loose. So think of like a round organic shape. And we're not gonna think anything more than that. Okay, so just a round organic shape. I'm gonna pick up some color. I usually like to start on the left hand side and just go for it. So you can use the kind of side of your brush because that just lays down a thicker line. And it's just a rounded shape. It does, it's not a perfect circle. You can have little pieces like I actually kind of like to do almost like a wave on the edges just to get a different um, shape. And then when it's wet like this, I'm gonna pick up more paint and then kind of just drop it in my flower. Like this. So it's just very loose, um, just kind of fun. And go a little bit larger than you might feel comfortable doing um, it's so much easier to react to larger elements and have them fit together than a bunch of smaller ones, just from a time perspective. So I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm not gonna touch it. And we'll go back and add details and elements on top, which will turn it into a flower. But for now, it's just kind of a blob. A blob. It's just a blob, but it's good. Like flowers are blobs Yep. Much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your brain makes up the information too sometimes. So. That's right. And that's why I love watercolor with flowers because really if you have a rounded shape with like a darker center in the middle, uh, your brain is gonna read that as a flower. Especially if you have leaves around it, forget about it. It's just like, oh yeah, that's forget a Forget about it. Forget about it. Okay, <laughs> so the next flower we're gonna do is kind of more like um, a dahlia, right? Is that the right flower? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so dahlias are just like so beautiful. And they're layers of petals that kind of just work their way out. And the nice thing about them is that sometimes they're like nice and rigid and then other times they kind of have like a wave and a curl to them where they kind of like <laughs> wiggle and move. You know what I mean? <laughs> totally. Yeah, totally. Jesse knows what I mean. He's really good at describing that. <laughs> so I love that because it gives you freedom in your mark making. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna take some pink and I'm gonna start by making smaller, um, kind of like curved lines like this that meet in an invisible center, okay? So it's just like a point to a point. 
with a curve in between, like that basic petal shape, but instead of a round edge, it has a pointy edge. And then you just keep making that shape over and over again. And as you work your way out, you're gonna let that shape get a little bit larger. And you wanna try and um, stagger them. So in between the petals is where you would do your next layer. And, and working fast is, is good, right? Working fast is good because when you work fast, um, you don't have time to question yourself so much. And I feel like so much of painting is you have to approach it with this like confidence of being like, yeah, I'm just gonna lay down that pedal and then I'm gonna move on. <laughs> I think that's why when I, make, I know what I'm doing, you know, <laughs> when I paint flowers with you, it turns out better because I'm trying to go faster and keep up with you. <laughs> and then I'm like, hey, I didn't hate that. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta like keep going, keep going, keep going. And the other wonderful, wonderful thing about this project is there is so much going on. We yes. have leaves, we have pens, we have words. We're going to add some really awesome um, stencil patterns on top too that don't get hung up on the one petal, on the one flower, on this one side. And just keep going. Now, beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. Jesse's flowers always have a little bit of a movement to them, which I think is fun. <laughs> <laughs> just that wiggle. Well, it's because you were dancing when you were describing it, so I had to go with that. <laughs> So just keep going, and then the more you add, obviously, the larger your flower will be, so you get to decide <laughs> how large you want it to be. With my first flowers, I always go a little bit larger than you might think. And if you're not sure how close to make your flowers, you want to make them fairly close, but leave a little bit of space oh, yeah. for <laughs> leaves. Um, so like this is perfect, right? Because Nicole can add a really gorgeous green leaf right here. You can do a little thing popping out this way. So, um, but don't leave so much space in between that you're just like, oh, that's too much space that a leaf won't fill it up, but not so much space that I can do another flower. Does that make sense? Totally. So, um, just do it a little bit closer than probably you would naturally do it. And then when it's nice and wet like this, you can pick up more paint. And so then there's like, cause right now, besides this little petal right here, my values are pretty even. That means the lightness and darkness of the pink color is the same. If you want a little bit of visual interest or maybe add a tiny bit of depth, grab more of that pink color. And on a few of these petals, redo some with this darker pink. Are you just putting more in there? Yep, I just picked up more pink and I'm just going over some of my petals. And depending on how wet they are, some of it will bleed out. Some of it stays sharp, just depending on if the petal is dry or not. I am just going for it. I'm not paying too much attention to what's dry or wet, but already I can feel a little bit of my flower popping just by adding a couple layers of a darker value. And especially if you want it to feel kind of super condensed and then kind of blooms out, then focus all of that kind of darker value on the center ones specifically. And that will just create like a stronger center. You can try and do these petals in one brush stroke so what I've been doing pretty much this whole time is like drawing and then filling it in. So I kind of like outline it and then fill it in. But if you want to try and do one, you would start at a light pressure at the top, push down, and then lift your brush up. Which okay. is so fun. Yeah. It takes a little bit of practice though. So don't be hard on yourself because that's just muscle memory of practice in terms of like pressure. Um, so give it a shot. And if it's just not fun for you, <laughs> then you don't have to do it that way. It's interesting, even if you just push, like if you're at an angle and you push down, mm -hmm. it kind of makes... Yeah, the shape of this brush naturally will create that shape. So if I were to do another one over here, and let's say I could just almost like stamp it. Yeah. And then for the larger ones, you would just push harder and it would create a larger brush stroke. And that naturally, see how the color the paint will naturally gravitate towards mm. the tip, which will create a value shift 
naturally in your petals. So now that I've shown you those two flowers, I want you to do more of those across your entire painting. Switch it up between the two, and then I just want you to pay attention to um, placement. When it comes to adding flowers compositionally, you never want to do one right above or one right beside it to where the centers are lined up. If you do that, if I were to move this and put it right here, and if I were to move that and put it right there, then I would have very strong implied lines within my composition, which would make it a little bit tricky to balance. So you wanna try and stagger these larger elements so then it doesn't feel like rigid. You know what I mean? So that's why I have one here, here. I'm gonna do one in the middle here. I'll probably start one here and then one here. So you see how it's kind of all this staggered pattern. I kind of really like this stamping technique. Yeah, that's very therapeutic. And then what I would suggest for it is I would actually, after this dries, I'll go back and put in my center at the very last. So then it um, stands out because I did it first and it kind of then just bled into my next layer. Well, that's pretty darn cute. And that took me like 10 seconds. Maybe not. Yes. But it but felt like counting? 10 seconds. I'm trying to keep up with you. <laughs> oh, Jesse, that's so pretty. Oh, thanks. I love it when your petals have a little bit of a... Yeah, yours do. Dance. Dance. Dancing petals. Okay, I'm going to do another roundish one over here. And if you go off your paper, it's so funny because when we look at our paper edge, we think we have to fit everything in it. But that actually creates um, kind of funky movements. What you have to do is kind of act as if that edge is not there. So if, if this paper went on forever, I would want to put a flower right here, which means that you would actually only see this edge. And so that's all that I'm going to put on my paper. So when you, when you approach paper edges, don't think that you have to fit it in. Allow it to move off as if the paper kept on going. And that's more true to like a pattern, you know, like a continuing pattern. Now, <clears throat> um, at this point we've just used pink, but if you wanna throw some other colors in the mix, you can do a couple of things. You can take some of your pink and grab a tiny bit of the space blue. And if you mix that together with your opera pink, you're gonna get this gorgeous like um, purpley color, almost like, I don't know, Ooh. like a pastel. The other thing that you can do is if you want to tone down your pink, because it's just too vibrant. If you're just like, that's just too bright of a pink. It's a lot of pink. And yeah, you know, some people just don't love pink and I understand that. You would want to grab a tiny bit of green and mix that in there and it's actually going to create this gorgeous peachy color. <sighs> now I do want to give you a warning. The stencil butter that we are using at the end does lean more purple than peach. So if you were to do a bunch of peachy tones and then try and use that kind of fuchsia stencil butter at the mm. end, your colors might feel disjointed from each other. It's not bad, I'm just giving you a warning. And sometimes people like, if you're intentional about it, I still think it can work. But when I created this project, I leaned more towards the purple pinks, the dark blues and that kind of thing because I knew that the stencil butter that we're adding after, see how it has more of a purple feel to it? and I wanted those elements to talk to each other. So, use all of that information to your discretion. Discretion to your choices? Yeah, discretion. Yeah, is that it? Oh, yeah. As you will. As you will, thank you. As you were. As, mm -hmm. as, you, know, as you are. As you are. Carry on. Carry on. <laughs> all of <the> <laughs> Stand by. <laughs> Do you suggest, so I'm thinking about this space, is it better to leave it for leaves or because we have two different flowers, is it weird if some of them are a lot smaller? Does that make question make sense? It does make sense. If you want to introduce smaller flowers to this, you absolutely can. You just want to make sure that you do it in more places than one. So mm. if you're thinking, I want to add small flowers here, go for it. But then you have to think about how to work that smaller flower in other areas of your composition so mm -hmm. it relates to what's around it and doesn't feel separate. That makes sense. I'm going to do some darker little stamps here. Okay. 
Now for people who are not as familiar with tube watercolors, there is one thing that I would like to um, hint at or give you a little bit of understanding. When it comes to tube watercolors, the most efficient way to use them is to actually let them dry on your palette before you paint with them. You can paint with wet tube watercolors, but you tend to use more paint than you need when you do it that way. So if you want your tube watercolors to last a good amount of time, what you would do is you would prep your palette before your painting session and give them some time to dry. So then you're reactivating them and then that way they just last a lot longer. I know we usually use liquid watercolors and that we can just go straight into it. So if this is your first introduction to tube watercolors, they're wonderful, but just as a little hint, they last much longer if you let them dry before you start painting. So just keep, keep filling up and keep just moving quickly too. Don't let yourself get too lost because it's kind of easy to do that. Okay. And I'm going to do some more over here. This one I'm going to do a little bit more of this, <clears throat> excuse me, purpley color. And then when you, if you are going to try and just use your brush to stamp, I would probably suggest having the tip of the brush be the outside, maybe. <laughs> See if that helps the shape of them, you know? Ooh. I like your angle. <laughs> 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 Ooh, that looks fun with that purple. Yeah, I kind of really like that. Oh, yeah. And I, it's kind of funny, um, when it comes to shapes that you do with flowers, we really um, need to get used to, like Nicole was saying, holding our brush in uncomfortable positions because that's how we make different marks. If you notice that you're using the same marks and you're not getting the shapes that you're looking for, you're not getting the variation that you're looking for, then you have to push yourself to hold your brushes in different ways and angle it different times. Like, like when I paint, I'm like this, I'm up, I'm to the side, I go under, and all of that creates variation in my brush stroke. But it's so tied to muscle memory. So when you first do it, it's gonna feel really uncomfortable and awkward, but then the more you do it, the more comfortable you are holding your hand in your brush really weird ways. And then you're just like, this is just what I gotta do <laughs> to get the painting that I wanna get. Sometimes I just switch hands all together and try if I, if I can. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, like oh. I'll get all, if I'm really wanting an organic shape and I'm struggling, I'll just switch hands. Nice, that's a great tip. Okay, <clears throat> so now we can start adding leaves. So I have my green, I'm gonna mix a little bit of the space blue in there because it just creates this really gorgeous dark green. And if you want to tone down your green, you can add pink to it, but not as much pink, it would be more green than the pink, but that will desaturate the green automatically. Oh, yeah. And then I'm just gonna look at where I have some larger areas and I can put my leaves. So I feel like I can do a big leaf here. So, and it's the same shape. We're gonna start at a tip. You're gonna draw it, meet it back at the tip, and then just fill it in. And I love leaves. I love painting leaves because you get to drop in color. You can even fill one in and then take your brush and actually draw around it like that and kind of go in and out of the wet areas because that's just going to create bleeds and really cool blooms. love that we're doing this whole painting with one brush yeah I think that's so great yeah because you can get smaller points if you just press lightly yeah like how you were doing right there you can get oh, pretty up, fairly right? thin lines with a with a round brush that has a good tip Yeah. And 
I got it. I wanted to be different now. Yeah, that's, I like changing the angle. It's fun. So these are the large leaf elements that we're adding and putting in. And then you can start adding smaller ones. And that can look like, um, like stems with leaves coming off of it. And this, I like to use sometimes just blue. So I just grabbed a little bit of the space blue. And then um, let's say I have one coming off this way. So I'm just going to do a little, pull it out, and then little leaves that way. Cute. Like that. So like move back and forth. I put my largest leaves in, and then now I'm going to put smaller elements in, and then just start to fill up the spaces in between your large flower elements. As you can see here, Nicole did an awesome job introducing some smaller flowers here and here, which is an excellent way to fill up space if there's too many leaves going on in one area. You know what I mean? Because sometimes if there's like only leaves, 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 then it creates like a large green chunk in our composition, which can maybe um, throw the viewer's eye a little bit. So if you're just like, no, I can't do another leaf there, we'll try a smaller <laughs> flower, you know? Play with it. Another tool that you can use, let's say that I'm like, okay, I don't want to do smaller leaves. I don't want to do smaller flowers, but I'm still not, these elements aren't meeting where there's still a lot of space in between. We'll just make your flowers bigger. Oh yeah. These ones, especially like our dahlias and our, I'm going to call them our blobs, um, you can easily add to them. So that's what I'm doing for these where I'm like, I actually want to fill this space up a little bit more, but I don't have a lot of room to do like new elements. So I'm just going to make them bigger. Sorry, Jesse. I'm, I'm actually going to mix my pink with my space blue to get a dark Ooh. navy color. I'm actually, I think I like that better than just the plain sp space blue. So I'm going to go over these Ooh, that's pretty. with that color. That navy is gorgeous. Yeah, I think it will look nice with the stencil butter that we're going to add. And if you guys have your pens, your gold pen and your pink jelly roll, you can absolutely draw in leaves and all of that stuff um, just for variation. So if I were to take this gold and I can be like, um, let's draw. And maybe over here, let's draw. So play with that. Let's draw. Let's draw. Let's <laughs> But just keep adding. Don't be afraid to play with the different color mixtures. Now for these larger ones, if they're dry, this is where we can add our details. So I'm going to take more of the same color, whatever color I use to mix this, you want to use the similar color. So if it's more purple, mix up purple. Make sure it's darker value than what you laid down. And then I'm going to add detail lines. So wherever I see like maybe a darker element or a darker section on my um, blob, I'm going to create a petal. Here's one, boop. And if there's none there, but you want a petal there, you add it, okay? And it's all working towards an invisible center. Like, and you can put that in if you want. And then you're gonna do just swoop detail lines towards the center. So we're trying to give the illusion that there are layers of petals on here. And then as you work your way to the edge, your petals are gonna get longer in shape in line, I guess. You just keep doing these detail lines. 
And the same way we staggered our floral elements, we want to stagger our petals. So you can be as loose or as detailed as you want, but sometimes just a hint is enough to give the viewer the information they need to understand that it's a flower. And sometimes that's like I call my job done. I'm like, if you can tell that's a flower, I succeeded. <laughs> and I'm so that help you from overworking it, like just yes. like letting go earlier. Letting go earlier helps from overworking. Working quickly helps from overworking, and being intentional about your brush stroke all helps with overworking. Those are good tips. And you can even go outside your flower, like outside the border that your kind of loose wash created. You don't have to be um, uh, rigid, rigid, like stuck in that area. You can go outside of it. Don't limit yourself. Yes. <laughs> this is your painting. You can, you can do whatever you want. All right, I'm getting close. It's starting to look like a flower. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I love that rainbow flower you have going on at the bottom. I think my kid got my mind. <laughs> she was like, don't go too peachy. I'm like, oh no, bring it back, bring it back. I actually think it's super cool. Thanks. Oh, I had blue on my brush. Oh. I'm gonna use smaller ones. And we still have more elements to add that Jesse's going to add. So if you're feeling like, okay, cool, but this still feels not as full as I would like it to feel, fill, we're not done adding all the things. And also you're allowed to go back. So if we add um, the stencil butter section um, and you're just like, okay, that looks really cool, but I just need to address that. You can go back in and add some watercolor too. So like understand that painting is almost like a dance. You can go in, you can come back out. You need to reassess with new, with each element added because each new element changes the composition and the painting. So you just need to make sure that you're still checking it. And I feel, I think I'm ready to add my stuff, Jesse. if you're okay. ready to go. Okay, well I kind of let these blobs be whatever because I think I want to come back over that, those areas in stencil. Mm -hmm. So I feel, I'm feeling good. It looks I, great. I might need one little leaf right there. Let's do that really fast. I always like to go back with a darker color and add a little bit of detail. Oh, that's fine. And you can do that with a pen too. So if I'm, if you want to add like a little, I'm adding some veins in my leaves. Ooh. That's always a good idea. Oh yeah. Okay, just take a minute to finish up your leaves and then, then we'll do the stencil because now I'm in, I'm all in that. <laughs> I so do you want to share your story? Oh, thank you, Keenan. Okay, so. The story that I am going to share here, um, I'm just going to read it. This was submitted by Teresa. She's talking about her sister, Krista, who is her story of hope. She is 46 years old and was diagnosed with breast, breast cancer in June of this year. Thanks to her yearly mammogram, the cancer was found early and is very treatable. She had two lump lumpectomy surgeries and her doctor was able to remove all of the cancerous tissue. She is currently receiving radi radiation treatments as a precaution. Um, this is her second cancer fight and um, and I, I chose this story because um, we have an opportunity to be proactive about screenings and when we do that, when we do our yearly screenings, when we um, pay attention to things like that, if, if it if it's caught early, there's more of a chance. And so um, I actually have a, a personal friend too who went in for her um, regular checkup and she, they did a screening, they didn't find any cancer, but they did send her a little note that said, we did notice like um, some extra something in there. It's not cancerous, but you might wanna just check it out. Um, she had initially ignored it and then later was just like, you know, maybe I really should check it out. She did, she had it tested, it actually was cancer. 
but because it was so early, they were able to remove it and they're just doing radio. It's similar to this. So I'm saying this story as a way of reminding you that it is important to prioritize your screenings. It is important to do as much um, preemptive work um, because there are ways that they can treat it. And so um, I mean, I'm gonna stand up because I did all that. But I made this apron. It's similar <laughs> to our project. Aw, look at this yeah, dahlias. So, so um, I will be sending this apron out. And um, Krista and Teresa, thank you so much for sharing your story with us and for reminding us that it is important to do our screenings. Do your mammograms. Okay. <laughs> cool. Okay, so if it's feeling dry-ish, I might just hit this one little spot down here with this. That way I don't undo some of the beautiful things that Sarah showed us and then we can get our stencil. Do you need this at all? Oh, you taped yours down. You hold taped. I we just told you to tape it down, Jesse. Yeah, I am a <laughs> <laughs> rebel. I'm a rebel. I'm not used to taping stuff down because I just like want to move it around. I need that freedom. Okay, so you could do whatever you want there. All right, so I'm just going to get my stencil. Now we've used this already so you can see I kind of chose this middle one. And again, what Sarah was saying is just Placing it off the edge is not a bad idea, right? Like, it's kind of fun. So both of my blobs that I'm going to work with are off the edge, so I'm, I'm just going to live on the edge here with this. Um, we might need a little something uh, underneath. Uh, so oh, we don't scrap get the, papers? Yeah, let's get our scrap paper back. From our lettering? Oh, if you're, go, if you're living on the edge. Do you want to share mine? I have. Oh, got it. And I'm going to be using this fuchsia stencil butter, but we have this in some other beautiful colors too. Let's have those oh, yeah. oh, so yeah. nearby. Um, so it, it is, it's like butter. Like it's kind of like this thick viscosity texture, which makes it scraping it through the stencil like icing. I mean, it really is. I don't know why oh I'm like, so it fun. It is like icing. I didn't even <laughs> think about that, but that's exactly what it feels like. Buttercream frosting. Yeah. So, and then this is like your... Don't eat frosting it. thing yeah don't eat it I wouldn't recommend that so just think about it like that so I, I just line up my stencil where I want it it makes you feel comfortable to tape it down that's why the tape is on my side because it was for me taping that well I believe in taping stencils down so oh that's that they don't move on you I'm not gonna do that though okay so I'm <laughs> just moving on the edge of the opposite Woo! <laughs> okay so then you're gonna get your your palette knife and just Jesse. Yes. Can I come over to your side real quick? I would love that. Nice, great. Thank you. <laughs> so, so I'm going to wait until he's um, he's where he wants to be. See, I'm going to move my paper a little and uh, leave the stencil stationary. Oh, yeah. So I kind of like the idea of this stencil kind of hitting this negative space in between, you know, like right Ooh, there. So yes. I like that angle. So think about your angle. Do whatever you want. Okay. So then I'm just going to plop it on there, right? What, which feels wrong. And if you've never done stencils before, and then I'm going to scrape across. Oh, that's your paper. <laughs> scrape. You could go over my head. I'm not so just, I'll just hold it. a blob on and then scraping it across. And y'all, I kind of like it when I don't have one of these cell shapes all the way filled out. Um, cause it kind of feels like a flower and like oh, a, either it's a good changed or, you know, so don't feel like you have to do the whole thing. Fully do it. Yeah. What do you do with excess? Like if you scrape it and you're like, well, this is too much. Do you just like scrape it and then put it back in the jar? Yeah, can if you, you have that? a mixed color, um, you can totally do that. I do that with printing, all kinds of things. I don't like wasting paint. Or if I've got an extra journal or other thing nearby, then I might use that as a way to warm up my next project page. So it's really up to you. Oh. Isn't that peel and reveal so satisfying? Like, yes. Peel and reveal. <laughs> And I um, like this stencil too because it mimics our dahlia shape. Yeah. So like it, all of these elements I think are talking to each other, which is really nice. But because it's a darker value, it brings your eye, like it gives you some layer and some depth to the other. So I kind of purposely wanted to have purple in the background of that one. So there was depth and I kind of like that. And I'm okay with, if you're like, oh man, I wish I had a couple more, um, of the stencil -y things on the side, you can bring your stencil back. Just remember that this is wet. So if you want to put it back on something, don't lay it where like it's going to hit that unless you want that effect. But okay, I'm going to turn my page this way and I'm going to, I'm just going to try for a different angle. It's so fun. 
think that I feel like I feel like Ooh. that feels good. Right, and I love how the thickness. I guess do you tend to go thicker just because you like the raised, or did I do yeah. too much? No, there's not too much. That's do you need better. More? Yeah, thank you. I mean, I just kind of think that it adds some texture and interest. Yeah. And you, I, I just believe everybody has kind of a personal preference, right? So go lean into what you enjoy and experiment and have fun. And then as you keep doing it, you'll find what you like the most. So if you're really liking thick textures and that's your thing, then you're going to develop a, a, an aesthetic around that that makes sense. Like as you keep following your intuition. Yeah, sometimes I feel like um, becoming an artist or finding your style isn't about learning everything. It's actually more about allowing yourself to trust what na what comes naturally to you. I mean, I definitely think that learning technical skill is important so you can like accomplish what you want to accomplish, but finding your style, it's a part of you. And it's so much of these, do I like the thin? Do I like the thick? Mm -hmm. Do I like the dark colors? Do I like, and, and it's not, once it's there, it's not done. Your style continually changes the more that you create. A hundred percent. I feel like it's just a continuous journey that you get to have yes. in your life. I, I'll, I'm always trying things and growing in new ways as an artist. And um, I like trying new things because then it inspires me to like get out of my comfort zone. As soon as I'm comfortable doing something, then it starts to feel stale. So I think that's why I'm always bouncing around with media. But every time I paint with you in watercolor, I learn something new. And then that adds to my like understanding one color and then it feels new again so like you don't have to switch back and forth between media <laughs> to achieve that and I'm really glad that I got to do that with you to remember that and what I love too is just like even if let's say you um, would consider yourself more of a watercolorist as opposed to lettering as opposed to mixed media just going into these other practices and experimenting will inform your personal practice mm -hmm. it will inform you can take these things that you're learning and sometimes just a break from the everyday is enough to get our creative juices flowing because it's play. I mean, creativity comes from a place of curiosity. It comes from a place of play. It comes from a place of um, experimentation. And so allowing yourself to do that with maybe things that you don't usually do will lead you on a path of your own creativity. I got an idea because you were talking about moving your brush in different places. And yeah. even though we have this beautiful stencil, if you're thinking like, oh man, I wish I had a little bit more of that, this palette can kind of be like a stamp too and you can add some dots or like, uh, you oh, know, go, on, go yes. beyond the stencil that you did. <gasps> I like those little dots. Thanks, they're on the stencil. I just Whoa. used the dots. Because I was like, I need something small right there. I'm yeah. gonna do that. Sometimes if you just need a little small things. Yeah, then I like things. dots. Just giving a little more atmospheric bit of something. I don't know. I'm into that. All of those words. Good words. <laughs> I'm using the words. Um, and I, if you're wanting to dry your stuff, like I think that lifting your paper when you can is nice because it makes the um, air flow through the paper, and I feel like that helps the drying of these kind of thick things. Oh, I've never even thought about that. And sometimes I even dry from underneath. So you're kind of going mm. back and forth. Oh. Well, look at that. Which is probably why I don't tend to tape my stuff down. But that watercolor, it, your paper does stay flat or flattish, more flat. <laughs> um, but what I notice is, okay, so if my paper is starting to warp one way or another, if I hit the uh, underneath side, it'll straighten it back out mm -hmm. a little bit. Okay. Is it a good time for me to read? I think it's a perfect time for you to read. Okay, I'm gonna let the, these dry. And I know there's some more things I wanna do and I'm seeing you guys add some elements that I'm really liking, but sometimes I just like to let it sit for a minute and then see what my next thing is. So that's what I'm feeling, why I wanna read this. Okay, so we all chose our um, different recipients and I chose Terry and I'm just gonna read it. Um, my family has the BRCA2 gene for cancer. My Aunt Alice had breast cancer approximately 40 years ago. It was my first introduction to breast cancer. Many in our family had breast cancer and other cancers since then. When I went through my experience with breast cancer, I couldn't help but think about Aunt Alice and the treatments she had to go through those years ago. She was a favorite aunt for all my cousins, and I remember um, my purple stained fingers from picking blackberries in her yard and the delicious cobbler she'd make with mm -hmm. them. 
that sweet? Yeah. She played games with us kids, board games, card games, snowball fights, and so much more. I also remember her wigs, her weight loss, and that she never complained about it. Thank God that cancer care is so much better now. I'm sure the years have taken some of my memories, but I will always think of her in her fight with breast cancer. And I picked this because I know that it happens in families, and um, I know that these kind of trials are, are tough, and when we're faced with them, um, we can ask a lot of those questions, like why is this happening, and stuff like that. Um, um, but in my experience, and the family members that I've seen um, go through this, um, and I can see, as she, she wrote about here, um, there's so much strength and things that come with d dealing with tough things, and, and we can see that in the examples of our family members. Um, I love that she she has these sweet memories of her aunt, and um, I'm imagining that that gave her strength as she went through a similar experience. And um, sometimes these kind of trials are hard, but they give us um, empathy um, for others. And <clears throat> I just I just really like that. So I made this one, this apron. Can you see it? I don't know. <laughs> so pretty. Um, and I used a uh, well here. <laughs> I used a little bit of cyanotype in the background and I got a little mixed media crazy and I added this word breathe um, because sometimes, you know, when we can't control the things that are happening um, around us, um, taking a deep breath really kind of settles our body into a moment. And so I love that and we can take a deep breath whenever we want and we can make art whenever we can. And um, I just also thought that the blueberry, um, blackberry cobbler sort of vibes this kind of felt like it went along with that and so i hope this is a is a way to honor those memories and and your experience terry thanks for sharing that with us i love it okay does anybody else need this let me pass this over uh maybe a little bit cute i like those pin lines you added in there i like the circles from the stencil yeah that's awesome and was so focused on the dahlia shape, I didn't realize there's so there's a few other ones. Okay, I feel good about that. Nice. Okay, um, I know that during the live we had an update on the donations, but I think it's been even more since. Yeah. Um, I'm just putting this on there. Even more, over two thousand, I think. Um, so that's been really cool to be able to. Over two thousand what? Oh, two thousand dollars for the donation. <laughs> Sorry, I just got really excited about that one part. This is why I like filming with you. <laughs> and Nicole, you guys got me back. Yeah. So um, let me grab this one and see. Um, to, to we donated to the Susan G. Komen. So um, that's you guys. Like you guys raised over two thousand dollars to donate to Susan G. G. Komen. Yeah. Am I saying mm -hmm. that right? Yeah. That's awesome. So. Oh, where's our flag? That's what we need. We oh, have yeah. a little flag wave right now. <laughs> this is so a flag Elizabeth wave. Elizabeth gave us these flags, and we, we had a good time with them on the live, but thank you so much for, for participating in that and helping us do that. Um, I think that there are some more of those cancer awareness bundles left, just maybe a few. Yeah, so what? So after we launched this, we got a lot of feedback from you guys saying, like, this is so amazing, but there's so many other cancers that can really use the attention and the resources. And so we put together a cancer awareness bundle and we put together, um, how many colors did it say? Six, oh, six, six. colors. Six dandelion pink colors. Um, and each one represents a different cancer. I'm sure you can find it on our website we'll, where it will go in detail over the different cancers and the colors. And then for every bundle that we sell, $5 will be donated to um, St. Jude's, which does a lot for um, cancer and research and children's and all, all of those things. So if you feel so inclined, know that we have that on our website. And I think the different colors were also some personal picks from our team. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, good. so like different yeah. ribbons mean different types of cancer. So those colors coordinate with those. That's awesome. Correspond. That's, that's yeah. on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, should we uh, untape and hold up our paintings? Untape yeah. And, yeah. There's no rhyme for me there. Uh, <laughs> untape. Peel and, and reveal. Peel and reveal. Peel and reveal the tape. Now this is why I get a little bit... Uh, oh, I love that border. Scary with the uh, mixed media though, because I'm messy. I I don't realize how messy I am until I'm look at my hands and my apron after, and then I'm like, holy moly. Yeah, this apron might have a little paint on it when you. I know. I it. hope you guys that <laughs> receive these aprons are okay with a little bit of 
marks. Well, these are used. <laughs> these are used. <laughs> like, what? To protect your clothes. <laughs> the layers are so fun with oh, the yeah. stencil butter. And I love the um, movement you created with your lettering. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. Oh, you inspired me. Oh, well, I like that you went big. <laughs> <laughs> Should we hold them up? Hold them up. Are you doing this camera or the front? I'm the side camera. Let's okay. Get a side shot here. Okay. Jesse. Oh, Sarah. Oh, Nicole. Oh. You know those like TV show intros? That's how it feels. Where they're like doing their thing and then they're like, <laughs> family, <laughs> family, family matters. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> nice intros. Yeah. We need music now. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you all for Thank being you. a part of this Thanks. with us. Again, this was a huge company and community team effort. And whenever we did the live, some people did share their artwork because I went and looked at the oh, hashtag. Yeah. Did you see some of yeah. awesome. yes. So if you haven't shared it yet and you're just making this with us now, we want to see what you make. Good we idea. love seeing what you make. So you can share that with the hashtags Let's Make Art. Yes. Or tag us at Let's Go yeah. Make Art. Mm -hmm. All the things. Or add it in the Facebook groups because we have a lot. All of them. <laughs> yes. us. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. <laughs> All right. Thanks, you guys. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.